again and welcome to Green Fingers. Today I'm going to talk about uh, rockery and uh, spring flowering plants and sleepers and why have a rockery and plants and shrubs that you can put in and complement a rockery and uh, all the other little things like placing sleepers and placing rock, the correct way to place rock. But, and this uh, area here was flat uh, and I've re properly done that rockery to give you an idea how to do it. But the materials required for a rockery are stones. You can either use, uh, there's many types of stones, but these particular ones are the moss stones, the most popular stones, and a few of uh, conventional railway sleepers. So using, uh, generally you'd need a, a trailer load would probably be uh, sufficient in a rockery, or de depending on the area of your rockery. Uh, so a trailer load either of uh, sleepers and uh, stones would give you an area for a nice little feature in the garden. So to start uh, uh, doing it, uh, most people who have had attempted a rockery uh, would have placed something like a uh, cushion bush and uh, put rocks up, up the, cr the wrong way up, and that is for the straight up and down. But that is the incorrect uh, way to place uh, rocks, that's if you want it done properly and looking most natural. So we'll uh, chip those out of the way. And uh, cushion bush is uh, sometimes recommended as a rockery plant, but it gets too straggly and doesn't really complement rocks. So uh, we'll, shift those, we'll just pull those out of the way and plant a few plants that would be more suitable. And the one I'd put in place of that straight away would be the blue lachinol here. There's no plant more uh, attractive in a rock. It just looks so right in amongst granite. Um, and that is the blue lachinol here. But Many people don't plant them uh, the right way, so I just thought I'd pop a couple in and uh, give you an idea how to plant them. Uh, they never really look, when you buy a blue lichenolia from a nursery, they never really look uh, magnificent. So uh, they're an unusual type of plant and uh, quite woody and quite brittle, but they give such an abundance of flowers in spring that uh, with that uh, really magnificent blue colour. So I'll just pop a few in there to show you uh, how to put them in. Now, they're a little bit sort of straggly, and the main, one of the main features about the blue lichen all here is that it suckers. Remember that it, it continually comes up uh, like cooch grass. So once you've got them established, put them in quite deep. This might surprise a lot of people. I would plant this one right up to about there. You can see if you plant it uh, in the normal left, it'll, it would uh, break off. But if you planted it up to here, it, it wouldn't uh, break off. With it, if you get some animals in the garden or cats or something, they won't break off. So put them in quite deep and you're not doing any, there's no problems there uh, and can just cover them up like so. Seems like you're drowning them a bit there but um, or burying them too deep. I'll do it again just to show you again. Almost on their sides you can uh, put them in. You can even put them, yes, like uh, almost horizontal there, like that and cover them up. There's no problems about getting them in too deep. Now, I'd always put them in in threes or fives. As many as you can put in, the better with the blue leash and all that, because you'll get that magnificent display straight away. There we go, like that. And like all plants, uh, give them a drink. Give them about uh, a couple of gallons each. I'd, I'd really uh, flood them in initially. And uh, just something there, just because they're native plants, uh, and we don't think of them needing water because we see them in the bush, they definitely need a a really good drink when you put them in, um, especially in the first summer. Keep them moist at least once a week. Give them a good drink, and you'll find they'll give that good display there. So there you can see those blue lichenolias leading up to the rocks there. Uh, in all rockeries, I would use a feature stone. This particular one is quite big, about as big as a wheelbarrow, and you could work away from it there. Um, so we'll start with this feature stone here, and I've placed another few lichenolias in, in the cracks. You can fill up uh, all the cracks with plants. It's, uh, that's how they grow naturally, so don't be afraid to pop them in all the little cracks. But the main thing in selecting plants for a rockery is to select the plants suitable to complement the rocks. Don't uh, get your plants and then plant your, put your rocks around your plants. You place all your rocks in, in uh, two, two sort of spheres, your feature, and then run away from them, and then put your plants in to complement them. Because your plants, your rocks are your most expensive part in your rockery, not your plants, and you don't want to cover them all up. So you just uh, pop all these little ones that wouldn't grow more than, a, say, a foot or 18 inches in them. So from the blue lichenolia, we'll go around, uh, firstly, with the red lichenolia, 
to show you a few of the spring varieties that are flowering now. Redlish and Nolia is a good one. And uh, most people would know that one by now, I think. Uh, plant those right at the front. A new one there, which is available in nurseries now, is the Reef Lesh and Altia. Um, that's from the northern areas. It's uh, Red Lesh and Altia is from the south, and Reef is from the north, so it uh, would accept a little bit more of the drier situation. That's a good one for the front. Uh, the Dampira is uh, a little bit more vigorous, a little bit like the Blue Lesh and Altia, so I'd put that one back in the centre, um, and that would cover the entire centre there. Um, the beauty of the, the, the uh, Dampira will probably grow in all situations. If your rocker is facing north, it'll grow in that. If your rocker is facing the south side of the house, it'll still grow in that. It's a, a, a tremendous little Dampira. Uh, that particular one is known in the trade as Blue Eyes. Uh, that's a, a very good little ground cover. It won't grow any higher than that. It's, uh, it will just continue to spread right through. Rather than uh, put uh, tan bark or anything like that on it, I would suggest you plant a few more. Pop a, another one in here and another one right through. It wouldn't look wrong. The more you have of one colour, of one variety, the better it looks. Uh, rather than having 20 different plants, it would be better to have five and, say, four of each species. So you've got a, uh, a, a good selection there. And a good example would be the red and green kangaroo paw there. See, I've planted three together there, and they look, uh, they look natural there with three. Whereas if you just had one, it wouldn't look right. It just would look lonely. So behind the uh, red and green kangaroo paw there, uh, there's existing yellow feather flower. And, uh, and I've just placed three rocks next to that to give that a bit of a lift. So these are our first layer that we've created, which that area was flat. And we've, we've got one layer. So I'll just pop up here and talk about this uh, second layer. Whether you've got a terrace or whether you've created a terraced area, uh, what we've got here that was flat, completely under me here was flat. So I'm up about four feet from where we were. And I've, I've, to give a bit of a feature, I've used uh, two or three sleepers there and cut one off half. And you've just, they've just sat there. No nailing required, just dig a hole and put them in together. And you'll see that little feature of a sleeper. Now, I wouldn't use too many sleepers just because you've got a trailer load of sleepers. I wouldn't use them all up. If you've got a little feature like that, you can complement it with a few rocks, say three rocks on the end here, which I'll uh, plant in a second, and some plants to complement it. Um, if you've got a lot of sleepers, where well, you can make a, a chair or tables or something like that out of the sleepers, rather than um, just make it look all woody. So, now getting back to the, the placing of rocks, which is the main thing in, in rocks, I'll just go get a close-up here of it. That's how the rock was in the ground, in the hills. And you can see there the, the level of the rock, the ground level, the moss is on the top, and that part was in the ground. Now, if you place it like that, it looks a little bit unsightly. So the correct thing to, in placing rocks is to put them back in, in the ground, how they look naturally, see? You just push them in a little bit like that, and they look okay. Just pop another one in there. See that one? There's the ground level there. There's the ground level. That part was in the ground. So we just, to get the best features of the rocks, just push them in like that. About half the rock in the ground will give you a good feature. And the other thing is, um, you've got to put them in, in groups. They're going a little bit like the plants. You put them in groups and get the, to get the best of them back so. So there we are, so you've got your, your corner of your feature, your large, uh, your large rock there is the feature, working up with your rocks. Then to complement those three rocks with the plant, I've planted a uh, Darwinia carnea there, a little mountain bell. That's a, a terrific little Darwinia, that one. It's a, a rockery one, it grows naturally in rocks. So it's, a, it's an excellent little uh, combination for that part there. And that will, those bells will hang over the rocks and over the sleeper later on. So moving along there <coughs> from the Darwin here to the end, I'd plant a, a wall pole wax there, right at the end. Um, right at the end there, you'd need something out on a feature, something that'll come up a little bit, um, because that's the end of the area. The wall pole wax will grow about a metre. That's a, an excellent spring one there. And on the other side here, at the rear, I'd plant uh, 
<coughs> a Eremophila to give you a bit of foliage contrast. And a Darwinia. This is another one of our magnificent bells, uh, Darwinia meboldi. See it there in full flower. They're excellent rockery ones for the rear part. And another one coming down in here, I planned today, I would recommend one of the low wattles to give you a bit of yellow in Acacia. Um, probably the lowest matte one like that would be Acacia congesta, but any low prostrate Acacia would be a good one. And uh, the beauty of that one, it never gets more than about three or four inches high, and it'll just run over the rocks and uh, look tremendously natural in, in one of the wattles. Now the only other thing I can mention there is that these are just a spring selection I've shown you. Don't forget, uh, when you are, are selecting other plants, try and have something flowering in the summer as well. There are a lot of plants that will flower right throughout the year, so try and split up your selection to something flowering all the time. If you've got a few gaps in the rocks and uh, you think, oh, well, I can just squeeze a little, another little plant in there, um, you'll find that there are plants that flower just about every month of the year. So. Uh, you can complement the rockery, but don't fill it up and crowd it. Try and get them in, in the cracks of the rocks and not, not just in the soil areas. That'll give you a good indication there. Now, when you're finishing your rockery, run it back and try and plant something as a feature right at the end. So I've planted a black kangaroo paw there, uh, halfway down amongst three rocks, and down at the bottom there, I've placed a few more just running away there into the lawn. Uh, with the, and the end plant there is... Uh, Corazuma cordatum, the flame pea. So you can see uh, it looks so much more natural and the rocks just run, float and sink into the lawn. So that's uh, a few little handy hints on uh, how to do a rockery and a feature in your garden. So don't be afraid to have a go at it and uh, good luck.